know it's not Mr. Hafford trying to bar and ask me what let be. Mm. So who are you planning on seeing today? Uh, I think I'm just going to look at Oh, listen, Captain, thank you for the other night. And I'll tell you what, how about a pint of stout on the house for your troubles? You're on. But oh, please, Mr. Holden, I'd appreciate next time you plan to go sneaking around Mr. Hatter's hotel suite, claiming to be the man himself. Could you try it and do it on my day off? Now, that's a promise. Now, what's your schedule? <laughs> oh, no. I'll take a guy like Frank Thomas or Albert Bell any day. Anyone who can clear the bases with one swing. No, no, no. you got to have a guy like Gwyn who's not going to strike out at every other at bat. I don't care if the guy's average is 295. Okay, well, he's standing 295. I care a whole lot. But you're not going to find a guy like that. you got to find out someone who's going to hit the situation. Paul Muller. You can't find this guy that's hitting in the statistics. Of course, the guy's out of the eyes. are pretty incredible. Hmm. Brought through. Hmm. You might want to try an active player. Why would I want to? When he's the best past, present, or future. What, you got a problem with Rod Carew? No. But I do have a problem with three guys whose lives are so, so pathetic that we're reduced to sitting around and talking about fantasy baseball all night. Oh, who are you calling pathetic? Just what I mean. Where are all the women? Well, can I get you anything else? No, I'm good. Could you tell the uh, charming waiter that I'm good, too? The lovely lady said that she is good also. Uh, anything you need to talk about? Oh, no. No, it's not worth getting into. So, are you going to tell me about this talk that you and Marty had? Uh, must have been a doozy. You look like hell. Oh. And if anyone knows what hell looks like, sister. All right. All right. Come on, what gives? Well, we talked. Yeah, you said that. And I understand why she did what she did, and I'm trying to respect her choices. I just don't know if I can live with it. You want anything with those five? Wait a second. Um, Where is it? Uh, nothing. Go on, we'll talk about it when you get back. Oh, go ahead, tell me now. You know how you always want to talk about the future, and I always put you off. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, I know it's hard for you to look ahead, but just take it day by day. Well, listen. Like I've said, I don't know if I'm ever going to walk again. I don't know if I'm ever going to stay sane in this silly thing, but... Uh, and I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to help the kids like I used to at the community center. But I'll tell you this, I, I do know one thing. Without you, I would die.
Yeah, well, speak for yourself, cuz. I don't have it. I'm not looking for women. I have a girl. A friend. A girlfriend. I have a significant... You mean a person with whom you relate to? That's what I said. Yeah. True. What? <laughs> well, what's happening with you and Rachel? Any new developments? Nothing's going on with me and Rachel. We're just friends, that's all. <laughs> and you and Kelly, things are going perfect. Uh, yeah. What? Well, if everything's so perfect between you two, why are, we, why are you always going out jogging? Oh, don't say it like that. Jogging. I like to run. Yeah. Well, who are you running from? You are way on the mark here, Mister. <laughs> you. I'm. Do why? You don't even have a woman. What are you complaining about? Well, that's the problem, isn't it? You, since when does cardiovascular exercise mean d domestic distress or, or, or conflict? Well, where did you leave this, Mr. Well, Cosmo? The way it looks to me, you're always ducking out, leaving Kelly frustrated. Uh, that is so not true. It's just an observation. Well, it is the wrong observation. This thing with Marty is causing you so much pain. I just thought we'd get a little easier. You know, you asked me if I believe in miracles. I do. But I don't think that getting what we want is necessarily the miracle. You know, sometimes it's the miracles when we understand why we don't get what we want in some situations, you know? What? God doesn't promise us happy endings, Patrick. I'm not looking for promises here, Maggie. I just I would like to find some happiness in my life, that's all. Well, I'm not saying you should give up hope, either. I mean, you never know where you're going to end up in there. What you need to come to terms with, make peace with, is that there are some things in life more important than human love. That goes against everything I believe in. What on God's earth could be more important than the love I feel for Margaret? Giving it up. You won't die. Except maybe from hunger if I don't get us that food from roadies. See what I'm talking about? You can put up with all my crazy mood swings, but you can always make me laugh. What else can I do? Well, you do that the best. I think that's what I like the most. You know, you're the reason that I get up in the morning. You know, I'm not going to make it till morning if I don't get food, so uh, let me take off now and we'll finish talking when I get back. I think you just need some food. Actually, I'm all right. Don't, don't worry about getting anything. I thought you wanted a greasy fried. I did, but I'm tired. I think I'm just going to go ahead and read a magazine for a minute and go to sleep. So you go on. Go get your burger and fries. I know you need that energy so you can study, right? Right. Okay, well, it won't be long, but um, if you get tired, don't wait up. No secrets. Look, you're the one that made me understand. Secrets can ruin everything. And and the truth can do the same. I have to know. That no matter what you tell me, nothing is going to change between us. I can't make that promise. <laughs> well, um, I, you know, I was just thinking on the walk over here. I never thought I was going to feel this way again. And I finally got through my thick skull that uh, my marriage was a joke from the very beginning. Something just it flew out of me. All right, I, I know, I know it sounds really dumb, but all I ever knew was emptiness. And then you came along, and little by little, I started to live again. Um, and we certainly never made it easy for each other. No, we didn't. And it was never really convenient. No, but, um, 
We found a way. We held it together. And I can't let anything happen now that's going to destroy us. Because I love you so much, Antonio. I can't imagine my life without you. And I don't want to. Kevin and Drew. The nice part about coming home to a boyfriend is coming home to a boyfriend. I can get an empty house anywhere. <laughs> Girlfriend, you got a key. I think that's pretty good. When I left Landview, I had no idea you and Joey were even an item. Yeah, well, when you, you left Landview, you weren't exactly clued into a whole bunch of... Thanks. I'm very sorry. <laughs> that, that sounded terrible. It's okay. Look, look. You're right. I was pretty out of it. What I do remember is you saved my life. Look, I, I took you to Club Indigo, that's it. I snorted a couple lines of heroin, thinking it was coke. If you hadn't gotten me somewhere, I could have died. Would you please forget about it? No, Kelly, the whole point is, I will not forget. Okay? Okay, anyway, look. Uh, the, the fact is, is that you got your act together, and that is the most important thing. Now, I think Drew is a very nice guy. Drew, Drew, yeah? He's a, he's a great guy, but um, we're just friends. <laughs> yeah. Joey and I started out just friends. Well, you're not home. I'm going. <laughs> uh, let me ask you something. How come guys can go out for a beer anytime they want? Why don't we go out and down with you? Oh, because I can't. I'm in recovery. Yes, you are. I... I'm sorry. It's I... okay. It's okay. I can't go out for a cup. Why don't we do that? Good. Okay. Okay? And I bet you're hungry. No, you know what? I just had lunch. No, I mean, you're hungry. No, I... Oh! Hungry as in a burger at Brody. <laughs> Great idea! The only thing is I don't want Joey to think I'm following him around like a stray dog. So, we don't mention the note. No. What note? Exactly. See, okay, you know, it, it, we could run into them by coincidence. Accidental, totally unexpected. Hey, no one should complain about a totally unexpected coincidental meeting. We can plan them. I know, you know what? Let's do spontaneous. Come on. Let's go. I've got to go change my clothes. Listen. I want to apologize, okay? I know I pushed you pretty hard to deal with uh, whatever it is you don't want to deal with. And if you don't want to deal with it, that's fine, okay? As far as I'm concerned, there's nothing to deal with, okay? You must have some primo editors at the banner because that was one fine sentence. But as for the substance rather than the structure, sorry, Kevin, no sale. Come on, Kathy. All I'm saying is that can't we just be friends again? I mean, it worked before any of this all happened. Look, 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 I promise, I won't make a big deal about anything ever again, okay? Word of honor, swear, honest, promise. <laughs> Forget it, Kevin. See, well, that's exactly my point. No, no, I mean, you and me and the apology and the whole enchilada. Forget it. You got it. So we're back to square one. <laughs> Fine. Fine. So, what brings you here? Oh, 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 I see why you want to get back to square one. Ah, so you can get back to the serious business of trying to steal my story. Cassie, it never even occurred to me that you'd be here on a story. Uh-huh. But since you mentioned it, what's going on? Mm. Forget it, Kevin. Come on, give me a little hint. Mm. You know, Kevin, uh, your body's really lonely without you. Guess what? They look the same way when I'm with them. I understand how they feel. Thanks, Cats. Really know how to make me feel wonderful. Okay. 
What do you figure that's about? It's pretty pathetic. Um, Kevin's wife is so sad he's been reduced to hanging out with the director's wife. Well, wait a minute now. Not the director's wife was just your ordinary director's wife. Mm, indeed. Yeah. But it's still pathetic. Yes, it is. We should set him up with somebody. If we knew anybody. <laughs> oh, speak for yourself, Kwan. You know, I do know everybody. Actually, that's part of the problem. Kevin knows everybody, too. He dated just about every single girl in Miami. Well, not for him to fool. Oh, thank God above, I'm not in the same boat as you. Whoa, wait a minute. Don't put me in the same boat as Kevin. I'm not hanging out with the director's wife. Mm. That's right, you're not, and that's good. Kevin and I should put our heads together, set you up with some knowledgeable young lady. <laughs> I'm not talking about making some, some noble sacrifice for the greater good. It's actually very practical. Oh, I see. Now, set my soul free. Is that it? No, you're going to give Marty a chance to visit her decision. Oh. Uh, what she did was so amazingly selfless. It was filled with love. She deserves a chance, don't you think? Sure. Yeah, good. It gets to me, you think. Or her telling me that I'll survive, but the villain will lose his battle without her. She just totally gives of herself. And... I, it hurts. You fell in love with her instinctively for all the right reasons. Now you have to love her enough to step aside. And to think I was happy to see you when I ran into <laughs> There are bigger things in life than romantic love, Patrick. I mean, if you set aside all your preconceptions about it, it, it it's a dream state. It, it, it has nothing to do with reality. And what's so desirable about reality anyway? So I need to stay away from Margaret, right? Forever. Forever. Get out of town. Let me see it. Hey, yes, that? sir. What can I get you? Um, well, I'm looking for a, a young lady. Her name is uh, Kathy Carpenter. Oh. You happen to know the wee one? Yes, I would. She happened to be right behind this guy. Mm -hmm. Right stuff. No. Um, yeah. Cassie? Uh, I'm Hi, Cassie. I'm so glad. Thank you so much town. for coming. Nice Kevin, nice talking with you. Will you excuse us a minute? What, do you have an exclusive with the Chieftains? Yes, Mr. Maloney has graciously agreed to do an interview for the Sun. I've got a table for us right over here. Mr. Maloney, Kevin Buchanan. Kevin, how are you Did doing? Did you know that the Banner is a much more prestigious paper than the Sun issue? Kevin. Uh -huh. That's low, even for you. No, it's not. I just met a very famous man, and I'm a concerned and kind fan who'd like to buy no, a couple of No, you're not. You're a thief and a bum and a cheat, but that's okay. It's okay, because I'm not interviewing you. I'm interviewing Mr. Maloney. Really? Did you know that I was in Dublin just a while ago? Yes, I was on assignment for the London Times. In fact, I spent a little time in one of your Irish jails. Oh, God, it had to do with the uh, press stuff. Uh, no, just no. sort of a Irish peace yeah. rally thing. Right. Kevin, okay. put yeah. morning in on my interview and go back and sit down at the table with your friends. I see, isn't she? Oh, she's not. I mean, I just, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, man. The chief and Kelly is going to be so sorry she knows this. Yo, not to worry, JB. Excuse me for one second there, Maggie. We'll discuss the miracles in the case. Sure. Cassie, I'm sorry. Uh, you, um, sure. Barry Maloney, I believe. How are you? Good. Patrick's going out of Tony Kildare. Good, Good to see course, you. Course, and I'm um, a great fan of yours. Really? Your album, The Long Black Veil, I play nightly. It's a oh, nightly oh, ritual. Oh, oh, it's devil for punishment, what? No, I love it. It's <laughs> perfect. How long have you been away from home? Ah, oh, too long. Every day is forever for me. Yeah, now it's amazing. I have to get back. No. I have to get back. Max, <laughs> your humble establishment has been blessed for the chief. Patty Maloney. How are you? Max How are you, Max? Hi, sorry I didn't recognize you, but I'm a little hectic around here. Yeah. Listen, uh, this place has been called many things. Humble is not one of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I hate to be so presumptuous, but uh, listen, I got a band stage for the weekend band with nobody up there, and you're, you know what? You guys are looking yeah. awfully thirsty. I thought maybe for a little exchange you could honor us with a couple of tunes. Oh, would you? Oh, that'd be great. I'm going after that. Hang on. Hang on. I you. Great. Going to play. Yeah, that's great. No, it's not. How am I going to get my interview? I don't know. Maybe you can wait until after they're done. Thanks, Kevin. This is all your fault. You realize that? We did. You weren't playing on my interview. I didn't know you guys would be here. I barely even know that we would be here. No? Did you see a note? No. What? What note? Well, 
Anyway, since we're here. Hey, well, this, uh, this coincidence is actually kind of kind of great. It's perfect timing. The Chieftains are here. Really? I actually just saw them on a talk show yesterday. They're great. Cool. So, how's it going? It goes. Mama's mom. She, uh, she's doing her best to back off the controlling, but sometimes I think it'll be best to just let her do her smothering act. Yeah, well, huh? Well, she just tries so hard not to be controlling. I wind up feeling sorry for her. Well, at least you can always keep a smile about it. Yeah, sometimes. I, uh, I saw you on campus yesterday. You were, uh, going to class, huh? Mm, Schoolboy Drew. <laughs> what were you doing there? Oh, I was just going out for a walk. So I wound up at the law school. You know, that place that I just wasn't good enough for, but I don't know, I just stopped and looked at the buildings and some of those old tapes started playing back in my head, you know. Sure. Not a good move. Well, it's not a bad thing. I mean, I gotta go after those demons sometime, and they're now than never. Mm. You, uh, have those memories like that, you know, that come back and kind of wish that you could have dealt with it? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Hotel. And we set the trap for Mayo Manzo. Of course I remember. That was the first time I realized you were more than just a 5 0 babysitter. That was the first time I realized how tough and beautiful you really were. The first time I realized how good you were. 
just another ex-con. Is that good news? That's right. Tonight, I admire her more than any person I've ever met in my life. I will help her as much as I can. And I will move on. No matter how much it hurts. What are you telling me? You don't want... But I know enough to know. I don't want to know anymore. But you always said there can't be any secrets between us. That the cop and you wouldn't let you rest until you got to the truth. That's such a huge part of who you are. Then I just have to learn how to shut that part down when I'm with you. Marty Berger's work and listen, it's going to be a few minutes. Why don't you just kick back and enjoy the music? Everybody up dancing this time now, ready? Okay. All right, girls, put yourselves together. And away we go. <laughs> One, two. Like 
Thank you. Up the yard. Up the yard. Thank you very, very much. Well, uh, we're going to continue now with a little piece, um, a version of a very old traditional Irish uh, song called Song Without End, Goes as Follies. <laughs> You're the most honest person I know, Andy. And I'm making you live with half-truths and evasions. I don't want that for you. It's just not right. No. You're not making me do anything, Antonio. I know in my heart what's right, and that's for me to love you and you to love me. And what about the truth, huh? How are you going to live without the truth? No, it's the truth that I can't live without. All I want lie next to you. I just want to know that no matter what, that I love you and you love me. And that we have each other. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> Thank you. 